Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. In this video, I will show you how to answer tutorial question for 5th hour and 6th hour. But before you uh, watch the video, I hope all of you already done answering the question or at least try to answer the question. Now we will start our first question. Uh, for 5th hour, uh, non face to face, this one I already uh, explain in my previous video so you can refer to the video okay i will start with question number two of fifth hour face to face explain the effect of temperature on reaction rate based on maxwell boseman distribution curve okay so i will start with this question first okay maxwell boseman distribution curve is the curve uh, to show the relationship between the temperature and rate of reaction. So, uh, you have the idea of when temperature increase, rate of reaction will also increase. Okay, we just recall when temperature increase, average kinetic energy increase, molecule will move faster more collision occur and more effective collision thus reaction rate increase maxwell boseman distribution curve will show the kinetic energy distributions for a reaction mixture at two different temperature okay so for example we run our experiment uh, with two different temperature which is the first temperature T1 80 degrees Celsius while T2 100 degrees Celsius. So we have the idea that T2 is greater than T1. So for Maxwell distribution curve, first thing you have to write or sketch the axis. For the y axis is for number of molecules, while for the x axis is the kinetic energy. Okay, we will start uh, sketching our first curve for T1. Okay, this is the distribution curve for T1 at T1, which is 80 degrees Celsius. Okay, the peak of the graph, I label it as E1, refer to the average kinetic energy at T1. So, this is the average kinetic energy at T1. Okay, now we look at the second curve at T2. This, the curve at T2, if you can see from this diagram, the peak is lower than T1. T2 is greater than T1, but the peak of the curve or the peak of the distribution curve is lower than the peak of the curve at T1. And we can have the E2 here, which is the average kinetic energy at T2 equal to E2. And we can see that E2 is greater than E1. Alright, for this distribution curve, we want to see the area under curve. As area under curve represent the number of molecules having the kinetic energy. Alright? Okay, next. We know that only collisions with energy greater than activation energy are able to react. Or you can refer to the effective collision. Effective collision, one of the conditions is when the collision, uh, when the colliding molecule having the kinetic energy equal to or greater than activation energy. So, from the distribution curve at the kinetic energy axis, we mark our Ea for this reaction. This is the same reaction but we run it in different temperature. So that's why both reaction will have the same activation energy. Okay, so we mark the activation energy at the 
x axis. Okay, what we are going to see from this distribution curve is we want to see the area under curve. So as this is our activation energy, so the blue shaded area at T1 represent the number of molecules having kinetic energy equal or greater than activation energy. So, as this is our activation energy, so the area under curve with blue shaded area represent number of molecules having kinetic energy equal or greater than activation energy at T1 as this is curve at T1. Okay, next. The shaded area with this stripe represent molecules that have kinetic energy equal or greater than activation energy at T2 as it is area and under curve of T2 curve. Right? Okay, from these two shaded area, we can see that which one is has larger area? The striped one or the blue shaded one? Okay, of course you can see here that the striped one has larger area under curve. Has, a, has larger area compared to the blue uh, shaded area. So since T2 is greater than T1, so at T2, molecules that have kinetic energy equal or greater than activation energy is more compared to T1. So as a conclusion, when temperature higher, average kinetic energy of the molecules higher. So number of molecules with energy equal or greater than activation energy is higher than effective collision is higher so rate of reaction is higher so to answer this kind of question you have to sketch these two curve two distribution curve with these two label showing the difference between the shaded area you have to state the difference in temperature as we label this as T1 and T2, you have to state which one is larger. In my example, I use T2 greater than T1. So I have to state that T2 is label, uh, T2 is higher than T1. And you have to compare. You have to compare the area under curve or you have to compare the number of molecules having kinetic energy equal to or greater than activation energy at T1 and T2 and you have to make conclusion. In other words, all of these points have to be included in your explanation. Alright, so this is how to answer the question um, uh, maxwell Boseman distribution curve. Alright, okay, next we go to this question given to you a reaction equation with the value of delta H with negative value. The above reaction is catalyst by iron. Means this reaction we use catalyst. What is the function of iron? Already stated to you that iron acts as catalyst. So what you have to do is you have to explain how iron acts as catalyst. So this is how catalyst uh, give uh, effect on the reaction rate. Fe increases the reaction rate. So the word increases reaction rate by providing an alternative pathway with lower activation energy. So this also have to be included in your explanation. Providing an alternative pathway with lower activation energy. Catalyst does not lower the activation energy, but it provides an alternative pathway which has lower activation energy. So, how to write the sentences is very important because it will give different meaning. So, you can write as uh, I write in this uh, 
video by providing an alternative pathway with lower activation energy. So, two points here. Alright, so we go to the next question. Draw and label the potential energy profile for the reaction with and without iron. Alright, so first we know that it is an exothermic reaction as it is negative value, delta H has negative value. So first thing, you must have the correct axis. Y axis, potential energy, X axis is reaction progress. The second one is the shape of your energy profile diagram. Because it is exothermic, so the product has lower enthalpy compared to the reactant. So we have this kind of graph. So that is the second thing that will be uh, considered. And then you have to label this one, your reactant, and label your product. That will be another mark. Okay, so uh, this in this reaction we have three H two gas and N two gas as our reactant, and for the product we have to write it at the product side, and then we have to label the E A. Okay, this one the higher peak one is the reaction without the catalyst. So this is our first curve. So we label it EA. This is EA forward without FE. EA forward without FE. No catalyst for this curve. The higher peak, no FE. Because the question asks you to uh, sketch for both with and without catalyst. So we will sketch another curve which has lower peak compared to the first one. So, this is the curve e, uh, with the catalyst. So, the EA from the peak until the reactant. This is reactant. EA forward with FE. This is with catalyst. So, we can see that when we use catalyst, the activation energy of the reaction become lower because the catalyst already provide an alternative pathway for that reaction. Okay, the next thing you have to label is delta H. Actually, this is uh, arrow down because it is exothermic. Delta H equal to negative 92.2 kJ per mole. So, this one also you have to label. And next is EA reverse also you have to label EA reverse as we discussed before from the product until peak because as reverse reaction the product now become your reactant. And the last thing you have to label is about the activated complex. So this is how to draw the uh, energy profile diagram for the reaction with and without catalyst. You must draw or sketch at the same graph to show the difference between the two conditions. We go to the next question. Uh, give another two factors that affect the rate of reaction. So I use uh, these two uh, factors. The first one is concentration and the second one is temperature. So how to explain about these factors? First, you must state if the concentration of reactants is increased, the number of collisions would also increase. So you can see the relationship. If you just uh, state that rate of reaction increase, so that we cannot see the relationship between the concentration and also the um, rate of reaction. So in this explanation, I state concentration increase okay the number of collisions would also increase more molecules would collide thus increasing the number of effective collisions okay this one also must include in your explanation effective collisions increase is uh, one point that uh, you have to state in your explanation consequently the rate of friction 
increase okay because i explain concentration increase so the conclusion is rate of reaction increase but you can also explain how that concentrations will increase the rate of reaction which is by increase the number of uh, collisions and increasing the number of effective collisions okay the next uh, factors i choose temperature Okay, same like the previous one, I state the higher the temperature, the number of molecules possessing higher kinetic energy would increase. This is how temperature would increase the rate of reaction. More molecules would possess energy higher than activation energy, thus rate of reaction will increase. Okay, so you can choose another um, or other factors but in this uh, video i choose these two factors uh, that will increase the rate of reaction okay next is a uh, six hour okay we uh, i will explain to you how to answer this uh, question okay first question uh, given to you the rate constant which is k Small k of a reaction is 3.46 times 10 to the power of negative 2 per second at 298 Kelvin. Calculate the rate constant, okay, rate constant at 350 Kelvin if the activation energy for the reaction is 50.2 kJ per mole. Okay, first thing first, what you have to do is you have to take out all the information given from the question. Okay, in this question, given to you the value of K at 298 Kelvin, the question asks you the K, also K, at 350 Kelvin. Means, two different temperature. So, given to you the EA. But, look at the uh, the unit is kilojoule per mole. Okay, so when... Uh, it involve the EA, involve K, and involve the uh, temperature. So we can know that we will use the Arrhenius equation. So as we know, Arrhenius equation equal to K is equal to K equal to A exponent negative EA over RT. This is Arrhenius equation. But to make it easier, we will uh, make it ln for both sides. So it will become ln k equal to ln a minus ea over rt. Okay, this one is uh, the Arrhenius equation uh, from the Arrhenius equation that we make it ln for both sides. Okay, in this case, we want to compare between two temperatures. So, uh, by using the simultaneous equation, you uh, substitute K1 and K2, T1 and T2 in this equation. Uh, combine, you will get this relationship. K1, K2, T1 and uh, T2 and T, T1. So, we will use this equation to solve the problem in this question. Okay, but be careful, uh, make sure the uh, value uh, is related to each other. Means K1 with T1. Okay, let's say uh, in, this, uh, in this calculation, I use 3.46 times 10 to the power of negative 2 per second as my K1. So, the temperature related to this value is my T1. So, T2 uh, is uh, the value related to K, K2. So, just substitute into the formula. And one thing I want to stress here is uh, the value of R here. Okay, in semester 1, you find, uh, you found the, the value 0 0.08206, right? As R value. But in this uh, topic, because it involves energy, so look at the unit joule per mol per kelvin. So we will use the value of 8.314. Okay, look at the unit of R with 
uh, value 8.314 joule per mole per kelvin. So the joule here refer to energy. So we our EA must also in joule unit. From the question given to you in kilojoule. So you have to convert into joule. That's why in this calculation we times 10 to the power of 3 to convert from kilojoule to 2 joule. The temperature must be in Kelvin. So in from from the question already use Kelvin as a temperature. So we just substitute into the formula and we calculate the value of K with the unit as negative negative 1. The unit of K1 and K2 must be same. Okay, so uh, this is the answer of this question. Okay, next. The same kind of question but uh, difference is the question asks you to find out the activation energy. Previous, previous question already given to you the activation energy asks you to calculate the value of K. But in this question, given to you both K1 and K2 value T1 and T2 but it asks you to calculate the activation energy. Still, we will use this formula. Because it involves K1 and K2, T1 and T, T2. And as I said before, your K1 must be related to T1, K2 related to T2. Just substitute into the formula. Except EA because this is the one that we want to find out. Okay, uh, Substitute the value and perform your calculation. And finally, you will get EA value. This value, I already convert into kilojoule. Before I get this one, I get the uh, answer in Joule first. Okay, so I already convert it into kilojoule per, per mole. It's up to you to give the answer in Joule per mole or kilojoule per mole. Mm. But if you want to convert into kilojoule per mole, you have to make sure that your calculation is correct. If the question ask you to give kilojoule per mole, it is compulsory for you to convert the final answer into kilojoule per Okay, last question to be discussed in this video. Rate constant K for decomposition of hydrogen iodide at different temperatures are given the, in the table below. Determine the activation energy for the decomposition of hydrogen iodide graphically. So the word graphically here means you have to plot graph. Okay, so we already have our K and T. Actually, it is related to the equation of ln K equal to ln A minus EA over RT. So this equation we get from the uh, Arrhenius equation which we have make it ln for both sides. So what we have to plot here is ln k versus 1 over t. So we uh, relate with y equal to mx plus c. So our ln k will be y. And our 1 over t will be our x axis. So 1 over t here. 1 over t will be our our x axis. So, the first one you have to prepare a data of ln k and 1 over t as we are going to plot graph ln k versus 1 over t. Then, after you have prepared your data, plot onto graph paper. Okay, this is the one that I plot. So, uh, I have ln k versus 1 over t. Okay, many of you ask me. Uh, about the scale because the value here is 0 0.002 right so this is the one uh, this is one uh, way to or one method to write the scale for the small value so we can put times 10 to the power of negative 3 as uh, our x axis so it's, it will be easier for you to write the scale of your graph okay and then this is y axis okay Plot onto graph paper and because the question asks you to plot graph or do it graphically 
So you have to show from uh, at the graph that you calculate the uh, gradient. Why you have to calculate your gradient? Because we know that our gradient will be our EA over R. If you don't see, I will write it again here. So ln k equal to ln k minus EA over R 1 over T. Okay, so this one will be our Y. This one our C. This one our X. This one our M. Okay, that's why the slope that we get here, we will substitute into EA over R. And then we uh, perform the calculation to calculate the value of EA here. Same goes uh, to the previous calculation. At first, you won't get directly kilojoule. You will get your uh, value in joule per mole. But I have converted into kilojoule per mole. So, this is the answer for the uh, question. Or this is how to answer the uh, EA value and calculate it graphically using the graph of ln k versus 1 over that's all for this session. If you have any question, you may leave a comment, consult me or ask your lecturer immediately. Thank you.